this is a map that shows some wells. Uh, they're indicated by these circles with a cross. And next to the well, I've uh, written the hydraulic head that's measured at that well. Up at the north part of the map, we've got the, uh, the edge of a lake here, right there. And this is the head in the lake. In this case, the, the um, stage of the lake is serving as a reference for the head. So we, it has a head of zero right there. So what I want to do is take these point measurements and develop a contour map uh, on this water table. And I want to address these other questions here about recharge and discharge areas, whether there is a stream, a well, and then draw the capture zone and flow paths to the well. So what I would recommend doing is printing this out and you draw drawing these contours yourself. There is another video that describes the rules and uh, take a look at that. There is a, uh, there is a screen there that, sh that goes and talks about the uh, strategy that you would use for making this contour map. I'm going to assume that you've seen all of that and I'm just going to go ahead and do this as an example. But you should go and try it yourself first. So I'll give you a minute to go and, and do that. Hopefully you've paused the video and gone and drawn your own contour maps. Let me go ahead and show you the way I would do this. So I look through and find the max point or max head there and the min. Uh, the minimum head is probably going to be the lake and the maximum that I can find is 100. So the first thing I'm going to do is determine what contour interval I'm going to use. And if I divide 100 uh, into between 5 and 8 intervals, then a contour interval of 20 would work pretty well. So I'm going to have contours of um, 80, 60, 40, 20. Okay, so that's step one. Now the next step is to start drawing in the contours. And I usually like to start with the maximum uh, point and contour in the highest or draw in the highest contour first. And I'll do that by interpolating between this maximum point and the neighboring point. So between 100 and 60, if I'm going for the 80 contour, that would be right in there. And between 100 and that point there, 40, there would be the 80 and the 60 contour. So the 80 would be right like there, and the 40 would be right like there. Now, I could, I could use a ruler, a scale, and make these interpolations uh, more precise. Um, but um, I'm going to just do this by eye, these uh, interpolations by eye. And uh, hopefully, we can, we can be careful, uh, do it by eye, but still be careful and get, get it reasonably close. So there's 80 and 60. And between 155, let's see, there's uh, 60 and 80. And 135, let's see, that would be 40 right there, 60 and 80. Let's move that one a little bit. Like that. OK, so now I can draw these in. And I've got an 80 contour that looks like that. A 60 contour goes through this point, through that point, there. And 40 is going to come through here. And let's see, there's 55, there's 45, and 40 is going to be Let's see, close between 45 and 38, so it's going to be right there. And it'll be between 50 and 30, so it'll be right there. Um, but let's see, where is that going to go? It's going to be, there's 45 and 22, so 40 would be like right there, and 
20 would be right there. Okay, so it looks like what we have is 40 is going to come in like this, curve around like that, and go. Well, maybe it's actually a little bit. There's 38, there's 45, so it's probably going to be more like there. So sort of curve around like that, and then come around to go through 40, and then come between here's 60, here's 22, so come through like that. And then if this is the edge of our map, Okay, so there's the 40 contour, and now we need 20. Okay, so let's see, we said 20 was right here. Well, no, 20 is not going to be there. There's 38 and 22 and 35. There's 20. 20 will be between 22 and 12, so it'll be like right there. It'll be right there. It'll be right there. It'll be between 40 and 18, so it'll be like right there. And it'll be right here. Then, okay, between 22 and, whoa, hmm, look at that, minus 25. So I didn't notice that at first, but that's pretty, pretty peculiar. Um, it won't really affect the contour intervals. We'll be able to, to do just fine with that. So let's uh, draw in contour of 20, like this. And it goes like that, and off. OK, so there's 20. And, and then, uh, and then z 0 uh, is going to be right here. The edge of this lake is going to be um, our zero head contour. OK, so that's the first cut. Um, and if we now look a little bit closer, we see that we have this point here at minus 25. And um, that's going to be uh, really a cause for additional contours. So we now have another zero contour, actually that we need to draw because between 6 and minus 25 we would have a, a contour of 0 right here and between minus 25 and 12 we would have 0 and 0 0 so we're going to have a 0 contour like this and we would also have minus 20 right like that okay so here's that 0 that's 0 and that's minus 20 Okay, so that's uh, getting kind of interesting. So here, right here at 100, that's a mound. And then here at minus 20, that's a basin. Okay, so that's the first cut. Um, recharge and discharge areas. Well, a recharge area is a place where the flow is diverging. So up here in this mound, we've got flow that is, we infer, looking like that. So this would be a recharge area. And uh, discharge areas. Well, um, this is a closed contour up, up right here. So water is flowing like this. And this is um, the, this kind of a closed contour. Uh, this really looks like a well, um, and so that would be uh, this question here. Do we suspect that there is a well? Yes, and we suspect that it's right there. So, As far as the natural discharge areas, then uh, the lake is the discharge area, because flow is going there, and also is there a stream? Well. Look at the way the contour is Ving like this. And it's kind of Ving like this. So this looks like a cove right here. It looks like a cove. And there's probably a stream coming up like that. 
So this looks like a stream, right? and it's a gaining stream. So that would also be a place where the groundwater is discharging. Okay, so I'm going to erase this line here, the line that's pointing to the well, because that isn't really something that we're interested in, that line. And probably what we'll do, probably have the contours looking more like this. So all those contours are affected by the well. Okay, so there's a contour map, and um, what we can do now is I'm gonna well let's let's just keep that in, keep that drawn in, and keep those flow vectors. So what I want to do now is draw in the capture zone for the well, and the way I'll do that is to draw in flow paths that start at various places in this aquifer and go either to the well or to the discharge point at the stream or the lake. So let's just say we have water that's recharged right here. Then the flow is going to go and the flow has to move through the aquifer and always stay perpendicular. So it's going to look like that and then it's going to curve and it's perpendicular and perpendicular and then probably goes like that to the stream. Okay, so that's a flow path. And then I'm going to start another point right here. And I'll have a flow path that looks like this. See, I always have to draw, I always have to curve the flow line and have it cross these contours perpendicular. So that one is going like that to the well. And if I start it here, it goes like that to the well. And I could start one there. If the aquifer gets recharged right there, that would go, that would go like this to the well. And I could start one right there. So, so that region is going, or that that uh, a point that starts there would also end up going to the well. But what about here? Well, if it recharges the aquifer there, it's going to go like that, and it's going to go off the map. But you can see, let's just extrapolate these points out, or these lines. Okay, so let's say we have the head contours looking like that, then. It's going to look like this, the flow line. Okay, so that flow line goes and bypasses the well and never really makes it to the well. And I could draw one in between. It's got to stay perpendicular, so that one's going to the well. And I could draw another one even in between there. Like that. So it's swinging around and even coming in kind of the back side. But if I do it over here, I have a, something similar. Okay, there's a flow line that goes to the lake. And then here's one that goes to the well. Okay? So what I get out of this is that just by contouring up these points and drawing the head contours, I can then go and draw in flow paths. And what I see is that there is a region like this. It's kind of a heart-shaped region. Uh, there's a region 
where all of the recharge ends up going to the well. This, there would be a flow line that actually curves around right in here. This region is the capture zone for the well. And this is important because if we're interested in the quality of the water that comes out of that well, then we're also going to be interested in what's in the recharge. And so we might be interested in, uh, in checking out and seeing if there are any potential sources of contaminants within this heart-shaped capture zone region. So that's the capture zone. And it's defined by uh, points of recharge that all end up going to the well. OK, so we've been able to identify the capture zone. And this really ends up giving what I think is, is a remarkable insight um, for what could be happening in this aquifer made just from measurements of points at a couple of dozen wells.